Your Honour, the situation is this. There are 106 charges that have been laid against my client. Now, my client is Torres Strait Islander Juvenile, born on 29th of June 2000. He was arrested by police, charged and taken into custody. Prior to being taken to the police station, he was questioned at the scene. At this point, his parents or no guardian was contacted. He was then driven back to the police station where further questions took place. The police are relying on this initial interview in their argument. However, there was no recording of the interview, nor were any, any notes taken. They're simply going off what they believe my client was um, believed to have said at the scene and putting it into a statement. So you are, th this is my first argument. My second argument is that the police then take my client in an unmarked police car after they've got some sort of um, admissions from my client that they drive him around the scene, still having not contacted a parent or a guardian, and they continue to further question my client. And Your Honour, if, if you see at page five in my submissions, you'll see that the questions went along the lines of, see that house there? Did you break into that one? My client responded, yeah, I think so. How about that one? Did you break into that house there? Yeah, I think so. How about that one? Did you break into that one there? Yeah, I think so. Think so. Your Honour, it, it goes on. There's 106 of them. This is the basis of the case against my client, Your Honour. My client is then driven back to the police station, taken into an interview room, and still, Your Honour, even at this point, his parents or any particular guardian was, was never tried to, never contacted, never, never even tried to be contacted. On top of this, Your Honour, some independent person was present in the interview that my client had with the police officer where he made his um, admissions. My client had no idea who this person was, had never seen them or met them before. Uh, that's in my written submissions as well, Your Honour. You can see that on page five. Now, Your Honour, my point is this. At the given time when the interview was taken, the police officers would have known that they were dealing with the juvenile. They have strict guidelines and rules that they need to follow. And at this point, they, haven't, they weren't abiding by the law, Your Honour. Uh, you can see it's section, section 421, Your Honour, of the Police Responsibilities Act states, a police officer wants to question a relevant person and the police officer reasonably suspects the person as a child. Now, Your Honour, it's clear by the look of my, my client, it's clear that he's identifiable as an Indigenous child. It's, it's not a matter of asking him. It's very, very clear. Subsection 2 states, the officer must not question the child unless before the question the police officer has allowed the child to speak to a support person chosen by the child in circumstances in which the conversations will be not overheard. Now, Your Honour, I understand that the police officers gave my client the right to have a support person there, but by all means, the support person that was present was not of my client's choice, as my client, as I said, didn't even know this person. In contravention of Section 421 of the Police Powers Responsibilities Act, said particular Section 25. So there was nothing to ascertain my client's level of um, education or understanding. This, Your Honour, goes against um, the level of admissibility of the evidence of the questions that were asked and whether my client had answered these questions involuntarily. What I'm saying, Your Honour, the police knew my client was a juvenile. To get to this point, they should, they should have, they, my client's parents should have been contacted or at least a guardian or some sort of support figure. My client didn't even know whether a support figure was going to appear in court to support him. What I'm saying, Your Honour, is if the police had abided by the specific rules and regulations that had been set in place, then my client's parents may have turned up to the interview and they may have said, may have told my client not to answer any of those police questions and we wouldn't be here today, Your Honour. So my submission is this, uh, that these sections of the law are there to be applied with. This goes to undermine the police system and states that the reason why the Police Powers Act came into place in the first place. Your Honour, the Act states that the purpose is to consolidate and rationalise the powers and responsibilities of police op officers for investigating offences, to provide powers necessary for effective modern policing, provide consistency in the nature and the extent of the powers and responsibilities to standardise the way powers and responsibilities of the police are to be exercised and to ensure fairness, Your Honour. That is to ensure fairness and protect the rights of the police exercise. So, Your Honour, what I'm saying is it's, it's clear in the, case, in the case that 
the way my uh, the way my client has been treated in this instance has not been in regards to fairness. The actions that the police had exercised do not constitute the intention of this act. Your Honour, it is my submission that after considering the breach of these legislations, if Your Honour finds that those sections have been breached, then Your Honour could exercise its discretion using the Bonnie and Cross and the Crown Against Ireland discretion of fairness.